Welcome to Veris Vignettes. I'm Lee Veris, your host for this digital photography tutorial. This is part four in the multi-part series, The 10 Channel Workflow. In this final phase of the workflow, we have enhanced the tone and contrast of the RGB image, enhanced the color in LAB, and brought that back into the original RGB image. And now we're going to do some fine tuning. We're going to take advantage of the CMYK color space to do that. We're going to duplicate the RGB document and convert to CMYK. Then we'll edit the K channel to make a mask for the shadows. We'll make a gray solid color adjustment layer and apply that in color mode to create a desaturation effect. We'll then apply the K channel as a mask to isolate the desaturation to the shadows. This will actually enhance the 3D effect and make the color more realistic. Let's begin. Okay, here's where we are right now, and uh, we've we've certainly made uh, some tremendous improvements in the image, and I can see that by toggling the visibility of my background layer here. If I just hold down the Option or Alt key and click on the little eyeball down here, I can show where we were when we started. So we can see a big improvement. It's very, uh, we've created a very three-dimensional effect and really turned the lights on, the highlights of the um, foliage of really coming out. And uh, we've really enhanced the color saturation and contrast and tone quality of the image. We could actually stop here, but there's one flaw uh, which is not often noticed uh, when working with images of this kind and and that's the the saturation here uh, in the leaves it's a, overall it's I like the saturation but uh, it's a little a little too sort of candy apple over over saturated here you can see in the in the trees they've they've gotten this almost cartoony kind of a color and um, that's very common uh, when we employ this much um, this much saturation enhancement. So we've used RGB and LAB, and now we're going to actually take advantage of CMYK as a workspace. And really, it's the black channel that becomes interesting for us. So we're going to duplicate this image. And again, I want to duplicate the merged layers into a new document here. This will be our CMYK document, so I will rename it here, CMYK. And we will have a new document here. There we are. And we're going to convert this to CMYK. Okay, so CMYK uh, is, uh, is, is interesting. The color channels are kind of bizarre because there's um, a lot of the contrast has been migrated into the black channel. And in this case, since it's a very colorful image, we really have the black channel just representing just the shadows of the image. And I'm going to make an adjustment to the black channel to really in increase the saturation or the, the, the contrast of the black channel here. So I'm going to use a curve and instead of attacking CMYK composite channel I'm going to work just on the black and uh, let's let's go back here to the channels and find the black channel and make it visible. Um, so we're going to highlight just the black channel here. So here we go. I'm clicking on the black channel thumbnail to make it visible. And we're going to use our curve adjustment in just the black channel here to create some contrast. And what I'm looking for is the deepest shadows to just go really black. And you can see over here I've, I've made the very deepest shadows all black. And then Anywhere that's really colorful, like in the sky, 
and the highlights of the plants. I just want that to go away. I want it to be all white. So what we have now is a very contrasty image that's mostly blown out with just the deepest shadows being dark. Okay, so here's now the trick. We're going to go back to our original RGB document. I don't need the adjustment panel open anymore. And we'll go back to our layers. Okay, so what I want to do is desaturate the channels. And I'm going to use that black channel from the CMYK version of this image as a mask to control where I'm going to apply the desaturation. And I'm going to achieve the desaturation effect by using a solid color layer. So I'm going to go down here and create a solid color adjustment layer. And I'm going to make it um, a, a gray just for illustration purposes. So it has zero saturation, gray. And uh, we're going to use that black channel in the mask of this solid color layer. So I target the mask for the adjustment layer by clicking on it. And you can see it has a double outline around it. That means it's targeted. I'm going to go back to our friend here, the apply image command, and we get our apply image. So here uh, we want to select the CMYK document the black channel and we want to invert it so we want all the areas that were black now to be white and you can see here now how that gray color adjustment is being uh, we're seeing it only in the darkest areas of the image okay so we're almost there now now all we need to do is change the layer blending mode from normal to color. So we're taking the zero saturated color from this gray solid color adjustment layer and applying it to the underlying image. But we're masking it with the K channel from the CMYK document. So we're only applying the desaturation in the darkest area. So let me toggle this on and off. You can kind of see. And especially if you look over in this area with uh, the trees here. This is without the desaturation. And now I will toggle it on. And you can see the highlight has maintained its saturation. I've probably desaturated this maybe a little too much. Um, and so we can back off on the opacity here. But really the highlights have not been affected at all. And uh, I'm looking for kind of a more realistic color. Uh, in the shadows, as it gets darker, we get less saturation. It's a very natural uh, uh, condition for the color as it approaches black it'll get less and less saturated until it's completely neutral and so we really want our shadows to be more neutral and you can kind of see as I toggle this on and off it actually has a more three-dimensional look to it. it looks more natural when we take that that color saturation off in fact um, I, I find that the the sort of a dead giveaway here for uh, a digital processed picture is that it's too saturated. Uh, but here we've preserved most of the saturation in the areas that we really want it. You can see the sky hasn't changed and most of the, the foreground grass hasn't changed. And the highlights in the trees are just as saturated. But now uh, we have a slightly more natural looking image with the shadows getting less saturated. So that's the final fine tuning uh, effect that we're looking for for our 10 channel workflow and we've used RGB, three channels from RGB, three channels from LAB, and one channel from CMYK. So in this particular image we're really looking at a um, seven channel workflow. But uh, very often it's that K channel in CMYK that allows us to do some interesting things. So um, 
try to take advantage of all those extra channels. It can really go quite far. And let's uh, now take a look here uh, at our where we started again. I'll toggle on the background layer visibility here by clicking on the little eyeball here with the option key held down. And there's that's where we started. So look at this. I mean, we've gone from flat, drab, and, and I mean, you know, it's an interesting picture. Uh, but look how it really comes to life, and especially how the highlights play across the image and really makes it much more three-dimensional. So this is the 10-channel workflow. I hope you like it.